Hello fellow chemical engineers, welcome to today's two-part video working out a problem that was brought to me by a student that I tutor. So this is a typical problem that you would see in a mass energy balances course. And this really is a simple yet elegant problem demonstrating the importance of making informed assumptions about the states of your system and how it impacts the, the problem solving itself. And so the problem states an equimolar mixture of ethanol and air at 75 degrees Celsius flowing at 200 standard liters per minute is fed into a condenser operating at 20 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. So the problem asks to determine in part A the rate of condensation of ethanol in moles per second. And this will be video one. This is a mole balance. And then the problem also asks you to determine in part B the rate of heat removed from the system in kilowatts. And this is video two. And so you're given three heat capacities with zeroth order temperature dependence, which makes the problem very straightforward, the energy balance, because your, your integration is just a simple integration. And so I recommend pausing the video here, working out the mole balance yourself, and then we'll work out the rest of it in, in this video. All right, see you soon. All right, guys, let's get into this problem. So step one of any chemical engineering problem, let's get an idea of what the system looks like. So let's draw our system. So let's start this problem by drawing our inlet stream and let's draw the condenser. I draw the little electrical bolt through the, the center of the circle to represent energy as leaving the system. All right, so after we've done this, let's also draw our stream information that we have. So the volumetric flow rate is 200 standard liters per minute and the temperature is, is 75 degrees Celsius. We also have an equimolar mixture of ethanol, which we denote by E, and air, which we denote by A. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our liquid stream that we're going to use this dark blue to denote. Then we have this light blue stream. Then let's go ahead and, and put in our stream information for the outlet streams. The temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is one atmosphere. Okay, so now step two of this problem, we're going to label our streams. So the inlet stream we're going to say is called N with a, with a green. The vapor stream is this aqua color with a V. And the, outlet, the liquid, outlet liquid stream is a navy L. Okay. So, of course, the problem gives us a volumetric flow rate, which is 200 standard liters per minute. Okay, so in this problem, we need to convert it to either moles or mass. So we need to make an assumption about our inlet stream, which, it, which will enable us to use an equation of state to be able to obtain the, the moles or the molar flow rate. And so what, what we can assume about this system, and, and because the volumetric flow rate is, is in standard conditions, which remember standard conditions is one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. So we can approximately assume that it, it is a, an ideal gas. It's minimizing its molecular interactions. The pressure is not too high. The molecules are, are separated enough. It's at a low enough pressure. That way it's an ideal gas. Okay. So PV equals NRT, and of course, because of the volumetric flow rate, naturally we're going to get a molar flow rate. And so let's rearrange to get the moles. And so let's also write down the ideal gas constant that we're gonna use. So we wanna minimize the amount of unit conversions that we're gonna to have to do. So instead of the usual 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, or Pascal meter cubed per mole Kelvin, Let's use the 0 0.0821 atmospheres liters per mole Kelvin since we're working in units of atmospheres and liters. Okay, now we can plug in our information. So remember, the pressure is one atmosphere, the temperature is zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Plug in our ideal gas constant, plug in the volumetric flow rate. And once we do that, then we see that the molar flow rate is 8.92 moles per minute. Okay, now let's work in, work in the units of moles. Let's go ahead and write down what our ethanol and air molar flow rates would be, which now leads in into really the crux of this first video, which is the mole or mass balances. So let's start with the air species balance. 
Okay, so we can say that the molar flow rate in of air equals the molar flow rate in of vapor out plus the molar flow rate liquid out of air. And so we need to also make another assumption in this problem. And so since this is really like a back of the envelope calculation, it's a safe assumption to say that the molar flow rate liquid of air, any air that's been entrained in the ethanol that's leaving the liquid stream is so close to zero. Let's just go ahead and say that it's zero for, for the sake of simplicity. And so therefore that means that the amount of air coming in is leaving all as vapor. So now we have our molar flow rate of air leaving the system as 4.46 moles per minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and put our air molar flow rate into the vapor stream. And now we're going to do an ethanol species balance. But before we do this ethanol species balance and, and we do our molar mass balance, we need to assume something about the system because currently we have one equation for the ethanol species balance and two unknowns. Two unknowns is in the molar flow rate of vapor and the molar flow rate of liquid. So we need to make an assumption about the two outlet streams leaving the condenser. The vapor and liquid streams are in thermodynamic equilibrium. Okay. And so not only is it in thermodynamic equilibrium, but we're also going to say that it's an ideal gas in the vapor stream and that the liquid is an ideal solution. When you hear the terms, we have ideal gas, we have ideal solution, and also that it's in thermodynamic equilibrium. When you hear these terms, then naturally you should assume that we're going to use Raoult's law. So Raoult's law gives us the key to solve this problem. It gives us our second equation for our two unknowns. Okay. And so what Raoult's law says is that the mole fraction of ethanol times the saturation pressure of ethanol equals the mole fraction of ethanol in the vapor times the pressure. And so based off of the assumption that we made in our air species balance, we can assume that the mole fraction of ethanol is so close to one that we're going to say it's one. Okay. And we're also given outlet pressure of the condenser, which we're going to say is one atmosphere. So this is really going to simplify our Raoult's law. And so as, assuming the correct dimensionality, the saturation pressure divided by this unit conversion equals the mole fraction of ethanol in the vapor stream. So of course, now we need to figure out how we solve for the saturation pressure. And that leads us to the Antoine's equation. Okay, so Antoine's equation says that P sat equals 10 to the A minus B over t temperature in degrees Celsius plus C. So you'll see a few variations of the Antoine's equation. You could see it as log base 10 of saturation pressure or natural log of saturation pressure. So the book that I'm using, which is a 2005 edition of Introduction to Chemical Process Principles, Antoine's equation is reported as log base 10 and the temperature is reported in degrees Celsius, which leads to these empirically derived constants that I'm writing down now. Okay. And so after inserting these values into the equation I've written, we get that the saturation pressure equals 43.85 millimeters of mercury. And then when you divide that by the conversion of 760 millimeters of mercury to one atmosphere, we get that the saturation pressure is 0 0.0577 atmospheres. And then dividing by the total outlet pressure, we get that the mole fraction of ethanol is 0 0.0577. Okay, so now this gives us enough information so that we can do a mole balance on the vapor stream. So what we're solving for in this mole balance is we're solving for the total amount of vapor leaving the system. In turn, we can solve for the amount of ethanol leaving the system in vapor. Okay, so let's do a vapor stream balance. So we have the molar flow rate of air vapor equals one minus the mole fraction of ethanol. Remember, we saw for the mole fraction of ethanol, it's a binary system. One minus that is the mole fraction of air. 
times the total molar flow rate of vapor, vapor stream. Okay, so now let's rearrange the equation. So we get that the total molar flow rate of vapor equals the molar flow rate of air vapor divided by one minus the mole fraction. So this equals 4.73 moles per minute. And then we can go ahead and say that the molar flow rate of ethanol vapor is equal to 0.27 moles per minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our stream information down. The molar flow rate of ethanol equals 0.27 moles per minute. Okay, so now we can do a total ethanol species balance. So now we're finally getting to the information that the problem is asking for. So we have the molar flow rate of ethanol in equals the molar flow rate of ethanol vapor plus the molar flow rate of ethanol of liquid. And we get that ethanol liquid is approximately 4.19 moles per minute. You divide by 60 seconds. Unit conversion is one minute is 60 seconds and you get 0 0.07 moles per second is the condensation rate. All right, guys, I really hope this video has been helpful to you all. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I'll see you guys in video two.